Washington Journal continues. On your screen is Alan St. Pierre, who is the Executive Director of Normal, the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws. Mr. St. Pierre, last week the drug czar John Walters was on this program, and here's what he had to say about marijuana. I want to get your reaction. I think that one evidence that we don't frequently recognize is, for example, with marijuana, uh, as I said, we have um, more teenagers seeking treatment for marijuana today than for alcohol dependency, despite our, fact, our efforts to control it. And I think that the fact that we have a problem with one substance does not mean that we ought to magnify the problems with others. The fact that uh, more kids, according to John Walters, are seeking treatment for marijuana than for alcohol. Well, he's absolutely incorrect to the degree that today's marijuana is so potent or so problematic as to encourage youth to seek treatment. What actually happens is young people get arrested for marijuana and they're given the Hobson's choice between going to treatment or going to jail. That's a choice that I would easily make too, to go to treatment rather than jail. So I don't think there's a lot of validity in what Mr. Walters has to say in that respect. Should, should marijuana use, should there be treatment for marijuana use and abuse? Um, to the extent that a person abuses a substance, yes, there absolutely should be treatment on demand. However, unlike alcohol, tobacco, cocaine, heroin, methamphetamines, marijuana, reasonably speaking, does not cause much concern for addiction or treatment in the United States. And is that your opinion? No. Um, every commission that the United States government has convened on this topic, including the 1999 Institute of Medicine report indicated that marijuana is, relatively speaking, a substance that causes little or no physical addiction. And the term that they use uh, to describe marijuana's um, abuseful qualities, if you will, is that it causes mild psychological addiction. Well, um, so does my Nintendo game. Um, according to your organization, uh, total marijuana arrests in 2003 were 755,000, up from 287,000 in 1991. Um, also, according to your organization, uh, about $3.7 billion is spent by local police on marijuana prohibition. Judicial legal system spends about $853 million, and the Correctional Institute about $3.1 billion. Where did you get these figures? Uh, the data regarding arrests comes from the FBI, the Uniform Crime Report. All 50 states, save for the state of Florida, advance their data to the federal government. And with that, we can ascertain what percentage of people in the United States are arrested on marijuana charges. By the way, of those 755,000 arrests, 88% of them are for simple marijuana possession. Only 12% equal cultivation, trafficking, conspiracy therein. So the vast amount of people who are ensnared in the criminal justice system are simply getting caught with small amounts of marijuana. Uh, regarding the cost of marijuana prohibition in the United States, that is harder to ascertain. However, by taking an extrapolation from the current state and federal criminal justice budgets, one can ascertain that marijuana prohibition costs in the United States about $8.5 billion per year. We're talking with Alan St. Pierre of Normal. He's the executive director. The numbers are on the screen. Remember, the area code is 202. We've divided them by political affiliation, and we're talking about U.S. marijuana laws. How often do you smoke pot? Occasionally, um, as I'm approaching 40 years old now, uh, most of my peers I went to school with used cannabis, and some of them still do, on the occasions that we are together um, to have a, a, a holiday meal, to go enjoy holiday outside the United States. Uh, not on a daily basis? Uh, no. Um, how have the marijuana laws changed in the last 10 years? Well, they've changed in a number of ways, most notably regarding medical access to marijuana. Uh, few realize that one-fifth of the U.S. population since 1996 have voted in the affirmative to have access to medical marijuana. That's probably the area of the largest concern uh, for the federal government regarding a changing of marijuana laws. Otherwise, um, it has basically been left to states and municipalities to move towards a more progressive marijuana law. This past year, Detroit would be an example of a large municipality that both uh, decriminalized and made available medical marijuana. Um, and one looks at places such as Chicago. Um, Mayor Daley is trying to get decriminalization legislation introduced there. So where the rubber meets the road regarding fiscal prudency, most 
local and state governments, if given their choice, move towards decriminalizing marijuana because it simply is a better bang for the buck for the taxpayer? Um, according to the National Drug Control Policy Office, about $12 billion a year is spent on uh, the drug control budget. Should other, first of all, do you believe that marijuana should be legalized? It should be legalized and treated in the same legal and moral controls that we have for alcohol today. Such as driving while high laws, things Correct. like that. Um, can you drive and be high at the same time? It is not advised. However, there is a very large body of scientific evidence that demonstrates that when using marijuana, an adult does not have the same level of impairment that clearly happens when they drink too much alcohol. If you combine the two, that is very imprudent. So uh, in this country, we should have what most European countries have, and that is a reasonable scientific standard for impairment while driving under the influence of marijuana, which we don't in this country. Um, and should other drugs be legalized? In my personal opinion, no. I think that to a large degree drugs like cocaine, heroin, MDMA, ecstasy should be decriminalized for responsible adult use, but they should not be legalized in the same way that Normal has been advocating for 34 years that marijuana should be legal for responsible adult use only. Our guest is Alan St. Pierre of Normal. He's the executive director in Attleboro, Massachusetts. You're first up. Go ahead. Good morning. First, please pardon me because I have a cold, so my enunciation is not is not at its best right now. Um, I have to um, disagree with Mr. St. Pierre. Um, as someone in their in their forties, and I am by no means a right winger, um, I I know um, from watching friends, from personal experience, that marijuana is addictive. I know we can get scientists whether we're talking about the environment or what have you to say whatever we want them to say these days but the simple fact is um, you, you compare it to it's not as addictive as you say cocaine but it has minimal physical addictive properties but that's not quite true it does have physical addictive properties but the emotional addiction is what's the word it's, it's what's hard it, that's harder than physical addiction to deal with at times um, and just like with alcohol and other things it's difficult to keep young people from using it. it and they, once they, young people get addictive, it's even harder for them to deal with addiction than it is for adults. Well, I appreciate the question. Um, I'm going to have to disagree with your um, personal premise that marijuana is addictive. Again, uh, since 1972, starting with the Schaefer Commission, a 5,500-page report on what the policy should be with marijuana and ensuing right through to the Institute of Medicine report in 1999 marijuana simply doesn't possess the same addictive qualities as tobacco, alcohol, cocaine and hundreds of thousands of available pharmaceutical drugs today. 